Hello, everybody. I want to uh, thank you for joining me. I'm Steve Warrenkamp from Well Control Training uh, in uh, College Station, Texas. I'd like to share with you a small short on uh, well control methods. Uh, we're going to talk about bullheading and uh, in particular on uh, for the production side not necessarily the drilling side but it can apply for both and so let's get started let's get my little uh, powerpoint going and uh, let's talk part one in uh, bullheading well control all right so let's share the screen here and there we go all right so bullheading uh, for a lot of you is not a common well control method and it most certainly is uh, only used in certain circumstances. It's commonly used in uh, on production and work over wells but not so much on the drilling side unless there's a lot of loss of fluids or other problems down hole. Now uh, as in most well control methods Bullheading is a constant bottom hole method, but it does uh, put a strain on the formation, and it is not a circulation. This is uh, pushing fluids one way uh, back into the formation with its virgin fluids, and then using a kill fluid on top of the column to keep it static. So it can be used and is, is commonly used as a method in a well control event, but not always. A lot of times bullheading is being used because of uh, uh, other conditions such as hydrogen sulfide and they don't want the gas to get to the surface. So they might bullhead the well to push it all back in and then come up with another game plan. But uh, bullheading is, uh, is, uh, is a good method if you know how to do it. So let's talk about that. Bullheading also has some misnomers, some places around the country few places in the world where they, there's a misconception on how to bullhead and I've heard the terms deadheading and top kill that is not bullheading. So uh, I think it's better that we use the, the proper phrase for the top proper application of the well control method right and uh, bullheading is possible only if there are no other problems with the casing or the tubing depending on which way you're going down uh, pumping the fluids back into the formation. And if there are, there's a derating on the tubulars, uh, bullheading may not be a consideration uh, based on overstressing or collapsing the uh, tubing or bursting the casing. So it involves pumping uh, the uh, producing fluid that's in the, the uh, tubulars back into the formation. And of course, the tighter the formation, the more difficult it's going to be, right? So we're pushing all the producing fluids, water, gas, hydrocarbons back into the formation, and then we're following it with a top uh, uh, of uh, hydrostatic fluid equal to the formation pressure to the uh, purse, uh, thus creating a, a blockage for uh, fluids to come back into the well bore. Now, it has some complications that you need to be aware of. Like I said, bulbing down the uh, tubing pressure, we can exceed, or if we're not paying attention to it, the fracture pressure of the formation. If we do that, then everything goes south and you've lost your control. Again, tubing and burst and, and collapse pressures have to be considered. Gas migrating up through the kill fluid uh, as we're pumping down, uh, we have to make sure we've got the right amount of fluid being pumped, the right velocity to keep that migrating gas back in the deal, back in the formation. And if we do that right, there are also some additives we can put in the fluid to make sure that uh, we move it in the right direction. And then if we get too aggressive with it or there's problems with the packer, there's always a possibility of unseating the packer. And if that's the case, then we may want to put some back pressure on the annular side uh, to hold and offset any pressures from below or the force against the packer trying to unseat it. And this is going to take some cal calculations. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of uh, ideology on how much pressure should go back there. And you have to consult with the uh, site engineer to make sure you don't put too much pressure uh, on the packer going down or, or too light a pressure 
while we're pumping based on the MASP as to lifting the packer out of the seat. So let's talk a little bit and look at the, the, um, the procedures for bullheading. First, with the well shut in, we've got to calculate the formation pressure. We've got to know what that pressure is so we have the proper kill fluid that matches up with that formation. And you can do it with a worksheet, a kill sheet, even a simple graph on graph paper will work so that you keep track of uh, formation pressures, shut in pressures, pump pressures, and then your final MASB with kill fluid in the well. Uh, against the formation. So volumes and rates, all good. Friction and uh, formation pressures must be overcome to achieve injection. So when you're pumping, you want to be able to plot your, your pumping pressures, make sure you're not too far over formation pressure and approaching uh, fracture pressure. So uh, we, we do some guidelines based on MASP at the beginning and MASP at the end, okay? Once the pump liquid reaches a formation pressure, what typically happens in the pump liquid we're talking about is kill fluid. There's usually an increase in pump pressure. This is due to the kill fluid reaching the purse. It's a different density generally than the formation fluids and you get a rise in, in your back pressure. So we've got to watch that and make sure also that that rise doesn't occur because of plugging. Once we've calculated the proper amount of fluid, shut down, shut, uh, uh, take a, an observance of the pressure so that nothing is changing. And if it doesn't, we can bleed the excess pressure off, bring it down to zero, and then observe the well again, make sure she's not flowing and so on, right? Once we know we have that, then we can go do the remedial work we were planning on doing originally. The chart on the next page, the next slide I'm gonna show you, gives you kind of an idea of how to track those pressures and how to line them up for a bullhead kill. Now notice up here at the top, there's a thin blue line. That thin blue line is your fracture pressure line. You never wanna see your pump pressure exceed or bump up against that line. You're gonna take losses, it'll complicate uh, considerably, or you may even go on vacuum based on the well kill. The formation pressure is what it is, right? That's what it gives you. And we will end up pumping from the shut-in pressure above the tubular shut-in pressure, and then some point just above the formation pressure till it starts taking fluid. When it does, you're gonna see this breakover curve. And then as you gain in hydrostatic uh, behind that fluid, and as that fluid's going into the formation, obviously your, your uh, shut-in pressures, back pressures are gonna start to decline based on gaining in the hydrostatic. Once you get near the end, it's a good rule. This bump down here could be bit plugging. You might see a slight bump with a change in the formation fluids as they're reaching in through the perks. You also may figure out that your calculation was wrong based on the fluid volume when it reaches the perks and so on. But uh, plugging, not a good idea. Best at this point, uh, about 80 or 85% of the fluids pump, you might want to turn around and slow your pumps down to make sure that you're not hitting it too aggressively, okay? Now, here's some tips based on bullheading. Start slow, maintain a slow rate at the beginning, okay? Monitor pressures and look for injection. Once the, once the uh, rise in your pump pressure moderates or flattens out, it'll start to decline. Now you've got injection of the fluid in the tubulars finally going back into it because there's going to be some compressibility. You may have some gas along with liquid in there that gas will compress. But once you start that curve and the pressure starts to drop, you can increase your pump rate and get an optimal pump rate above that gas migration, right? And a good rule of thumb on, on pumping, once injection started to occur, is one barrel per uh, ID inch of tubing. So I've got two and seven eighths, two and three eighths. I can pump just a little bit over two barrels a minute and I should do the trick still keeping me below my MASP line. All right. Now come up with the max to that maximum rate in stages. Don't just crank it up, right? Abrupt changes can cause abrupt changes down hole. If you're constantly changing the pump rates, you might miss changes down hole that might be detrimental. You might miss the plugging and so on. So don't vary. Find that rate and watch it closely till you get to that 80, 85% volume pump, then slow it down and look for back off or plugging.
It's really important not to overpressure the well more than you need to in this exercise of bull eddy. It can result in a whole lot more work with a whole lot more headaches if you do it wrong. Watch and make sure that you've got maximum pressure on the casing, on the tubing, and against the formation, and you'll be doing okay. Ensure you don't overpressure the operation, right? You don't know if the casing's old or the tubing's old. You might not have the rating or the pressure rating on that that you think you can control. Add a safety margin in there. It'll make the kill job a lot easier. So you're going to ask yourself, what's the maximum pressure with no kill fluid in the string? And what's the maximum pressure with fluid, kill fluid in the string? These are our MASP points. And to illustrate that, let me show you a chart. So at the beginning up here, this is my maximum fracture of the formation. I don't want to hit this line. And this, once you've added kill fluid to the well, this is your maximum pressure with a column of kill fluid that I don't want to exceed. So it's pretty much a, a straight line along the curve now. I can operate anywhere in here that I want. So if I'm saying that and I have a tubing pressure of, let's say, 2330 to start, I'm going to start pumping, and I'm going to pump till I start seeing injection. Now, once I get to injection, then it breaks over. Then I can kind of optimize as much a rate as I can till I reach that 80% level about right here. I want to slow my pumps down looking for that plugging effect or that change in kill fluid as it reaches the purpose. Once I get to this point and I know that I pumped 100% of my kill fluid to the purse or an over pumping like some companies do by one barrel, that's okay too, but do it slowly. Then I can back off and observe the well, making sure that I've got no flow and nothing else is going on down hole. That's the short and sweet of the bullhead. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this little snippet and I'd like you to Go to our website, which is vwellcontroltraining.com, or you can call us at 855-888-0323, and our emails are also on the website for other uh, e-learning and uh, snippets in well control, hydraulics, and uh, density, and a whole bunch of stuff you might enjoy. So thank you for listening.